Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over my top 10 running backs in the 2023 NFL class. We're going to be going for, you know, if you see my D tackle and edge rank, the same kind of thing. We're going to go 10 to 1. And then I'll go ahead and split them up into tiers at the end for you guys. But anyways, let's go ahead and get right into our first player start coming in at number 10 in our rankings. Coming in at number 10 in our running back rankings, we got Kendra Miller from TCU. Put up 1,400 yards and 17 touchdowns for TCU in 2023. I mean, this dude was one of the most productive running backs in the whole nation this past year. And one of the main reasons, like, TCU made it. Max Duggan and Quentin Johnston, you know, obviously had a great passing attack. But Kendra Miller was a heart and soul of this offense. And honestly, him getting hurt against Michigan, I think, really hurt them in the national championship. Not saying they would have won with him, but I think it would have been better because he was really the heart and soul of this team. And he's one of those dudes where he doesn't have, like, elite speed, but he's a really patient runner behind the line of scrimmage. And when he gets into the open field, he's a hard dude to take down. He's 5'11", 215, so he's a bigger running back. And he's really good at breaking tackles. I mean, you watch TCU. This dude's hard to bring down in the open field. So you have questions about his lack of, you know, elite speed in the NFL translating. But I still think he's going to be a really good running back just with his size and ability to break tackles. He can kind of become like a grinder running back in the league. And I think he could be very productive in why he's coming in at number 10 for me. Coming in at number 9, we got Tank Bigsby from Auburn. Put up 970 yards and 10 touchdowns in 2022. Um, Tank Bigsby is one of those dudes in this draft class where the reason he's at 9 and not higher is mostly due to his lack of like receiving ability and pass blocking. And he does have a little bit of a Saquon Barkley in him where he really just wants to bounce plays and make the big plays all the time and does a little too much. But like as a runner, I mean, this dude, he has a great combination of elusiveness and power. One of the best dudes at breaking tackles, and he has that home run threat ability. I feel like we never really got to show his full potential at Auburn. He came on as a true freshman and balled out, and then he kind of just had some down years along with Auburn, who had some down years. So he's a dude that could maybe even, he's one of my few dudes I think could maybe have better production in the NFL than he even did in college. But his lack of third down ability is the reason he's kind of here at nine rather than higher. But as a pure runner, this dude is very good at breaking tackles. He has good speed, good power. He just needs to work on that pass catching ability. And maybe he could turn into a good running back someday. Moving on to number eight, we got Tajay Spears from Tulane. He's a dude who kind of like was lower in the process and then came out and one of the biggest risers from the Senior Bowl. He, he balled at the Senior Bowl along with having an incredible game. Again, a lackluster USC defense, but an incredible game in their bowl game against USC. But he's just one of your more change of pace, elusive, just quick cut backs. I mean, his his ability to quick make some quick cuts and just make dudes missed is like up there with like Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn's another dude I love who's just elusive, but he's just too small. Tajay Spears is bigger than Deuce Vaughn. He's got a better size, but like the reason he's kind of here at eight with that explosive ability and elite production, you see almost 1,600 yards and almost 20 touchdowns this past season he has that elite you know home run threat and that quick twitch ability but as a dude who's a little bit smaller and faster you'd like to see a little bit better hands from him in pass game but if he can kind of work on his hands and become a better pass catcher he could be really good change of pace back to pair with a bigger back I mean you come in he's kind of your home run threat you're kind of pass catching back so I think if he works on his pass catching I could definitely see him being like a, a, a better even better dude in this class maybe even like a top five kind of dude but just with his size and not being the greatest pass catcher I think he's a good pass catcher I'm not saying he's bad um like he's definitely better than like Tank Bigsby but like just if he can work on that even more he could be better but that's why I have him here at eight where some people are a lot higher on him I just think like I just want to see more in the passing game at his size for a dude like him to be able to see that and I just like some of the dudes a little bit more above him but he's a very good running back and I think this is one of the deepest running back classes we've had in a while so like I've said before you know Tajay Spears is good him at eight isn't really diss to him it's more of like a nod to some of the dudes I really have above him coming up here next up we got one of my offensive gems if you want to hear more about Sean Tucker go check out my offensive gems video he's coming in at number seven but just over a thousand yards and 11 touchdowns in his last season at Syracuse he's another like really elusive dude um really good at breaking tackles he's got good speed he got great speed, actually, and he's one of my favorite dudes just as a good size running back. Like I said, more in-depth on him in my Offensive Gems video. He's doing well. I'm actually kind of sad to put him here at 7 because I really love Sean Tucker. But there's just been some dudes, like the next couple dudes above him, that have really been catching my eye lately and have kind of jumped him because I kind of had him at like running back 5. But there's a couple dudes coming up here that really jumped him. But another dude that's really productive, and I said in my Offensive Gems video, is like this dude could end up being one of the steals of the draft going on maybe even day three he could be a steal of the draft that comes up and has insane production for a day three pick in his first year in the nfl 
Next up, we got Roshan Johns. And he's one of the dudes I was talking about that kind of jumped Sean Tucker for me. Um, he came in only 550 yards and five touchdowns, but you can see running back Texas. There's a reason of that lack of production is because he's behind the best running back in the nation. So don't worry. I'm not too worried about the production. I think he kind of got hidden because of Bijan. Like, I think if he was on another team, he could have had insane production in college. But he's a dude where... He's not like your elite athlete compared to some of the other dudes. That he's, he's a good athlete. I'm not saying he's a bad athlete, but he's more of like your slow play, really smart dude, really good in pass protection. He's one of the better pass protecting running backs, but he's really good at just reading blocks. He's a more powerful runner, really good at breaking tackles. And, you know, he has that. Uh, they ran a lot of Wildcat with like him and Bijan in the backfield, which I think could be useful in the NFL. You've seen with like the Eagles are so good in the red zone because they have that extra blocker using Jalen Hurts as a runner. So like you can, he's a dude that you can play at quarterback in the red zone in the goal line and get an extra blocker and run some more run plays, which I love that ability out of him. But another dude who, you know, we haven't seen a lot of him because he was a backup running back to B. John Robinson in college. But another dude, I, just, I love his running style. Like I said, he's not like the quickest, twitchiest athlete, but as just a pure running back, and he's, he's a pretty good receiver. But also, like I said, pass protection is one of the things that people don't talk about enough that like coaches really care about in the NFL. And he's a very good pass protector. So reason that... He could go higher than a lot of people think and have an early role. If there's one way to get role in the NFL as a running back early on, it's be a good pass protector. And he's a good pass protector. You saw like Zeke is one of the best pass protectors coming out and he was playing early. Obviously, Zeke's a freak and he went top 10. But like Roshan Johnson could get a role early on in his NFL career as a pass protector and just a really reliable and smart running back. Coming in at number five, we got another one of my offensive gems, Israel Abanacanda from Pitt. Great production, 1,400 yards and 20 touchdowns this year at Pitt. He's another dude where if you want to hear more in depth, go check out my offensive gems. I was kind of early on this dude. I put him in my offensive gems, and then he tested insane at his pro day ran. I think the scouts have been in the four threes. I mean, this dude's got blazing speed, incredible one-cut back that doesn't get taken down easily. He's been like the talk of the town on Twitter a lot recently. So like I said, you want to hear more? about him specifically go check out my offensive gems he's one of my favorite running backs that i think is shooting up boards right now and one of those dudes that might go a lot higher than a lot of people think and could be a very productive runner in the nfl just because like he had elite production combined with elite athleticism that's a good combination going into the league and to do that teams are going to love and try and target probably on day two of the draft Coming in at number four, we get Devin A-Chain from Texas A&M. Put up 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns this year for Texas A&M, who had a little bit of an iffy year. We thought, you know, a lot people were a lot higher than him before the season. But Devin A-Chain's a dude who legit blazing track speed. I mean, this dude, low four threes. Um, he was a He's a collegiate track runner. If you want to see more on his, like, elite speed, go check out my combine videos I did about him. I talk about some of his, like, college running and sprinting that makes, like, why he's so fast. But, like, He's not just like a speedster. He's also a really good running back. Like he's good at understanding blocks. He's not like just your one trick pony where he's just fast and that's about it. He's fast combined with a really good running back. And I think like speed can be a, this kind, his kind of speed is game changing at the NFL level and his ability to be able to break like, like 80 yard runs, I think in the NFL. And I think he could, he could be a really good returner too. If you kind of work on that and be a really good elite electric, like kick returner in the NFL and could be a dude, you know, like Cordero Patterson can just change the game just with his elite speed. Like the reason I have him at four above some of like the dudes like Izzy and Roshan Johnson is just because like his speed is game changing. I mean, he's not like, he's a good running back with like an elite attribute. His speed is elite compared to like, he's the fastest dude in this class for me. Um, just as a, as a running back. I mean, He's got that speed that's game-changing. I've said it like 20 times because I want you to know that's why he's at four and to do that. I don't know what, how teams view him right now, um, but for me, I think just he's a dude that I'm taking a risk on as a dude that could be have a, have some really productive seasons, kind of like Chris Johnson. You know, We saw that kind of speed, how much that could change the game, and he's another dude that could be like that Chris Johnson effect coming up into the NFL. Rounding into the top three, we're coming in at number three. We've got Zach Charbonnet from UCLA. Put up almost 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns this past season. He's one of your few. Like, he's the perfect build for like a running back. Um, He's coming in. I got to check. Sorry, just a minute. He got six foot two fifteen. Perfect build for a running back. He's, he's not your elite speed. He low, ran low four fives, but that's definitely good enough speed for a running back. He's, like I said, one of the things I was talking about, Roshan Johnson, and pass protecting a way like to find the field. Zach Charbonnet is a very good pass protector, very good at picking up blitzes. 
dude that can break tackles. He's one of the few like true could be a three down running back in this class. We have a lot of like kind of like smaller dudes that like I don't know if they find necessarily a three down role, but they could have big roles. He's one of the dudes that could definitely have a three down role in the NFL just with his size and ability to pass protect, along with being just a really good running back too. Like I said, he's not an elite athlete. But he's definitely a good enough athlete for a great size to be a true three-down running back in the NFL. And I ultimately think he goes day two in the draft. He's, like I said, my third running back. Him and, you know, the top two. I assume you can guess who the top two are. But him and, like, Jameer Gibbs are kind of those day, those second-round dudes. I think teams are, he's going to, he's kind of a drop-off for me where I'm like, I really truly think he could be a three-down. And I think he's kind of that cut-off of the tier I'll show you later that cut off of the tier once you get to these next guys like A-Chain, Israel Band, and Kind of smaller dudes who have like really good ability, but they might not be a full true like three down workhorse running back. Charbonnet is one of the dudes that could be a true three down workhorse running back in the league. And that's why he's at three ultimately for me. Coming at number two, we got Jameer Gibbs from Alabama. Put up just under a thousand yards and seven touchdowns in his last season for Alabama. He's one of your just like electric athletes. I mean, you go and put on some Jameer Gibbs film and this dude makes guys miss. He's an elite receiver. He's one of the best receivers in this draft class. Him and Bijan Robinson are both just really elite receivers, which is becoming more and more important with so much passing the NFL. Like a receiving back can be so important. So like Jameer Gibbs is an elite receiving back, along with just a really good runner and explosive runner. So like you combine those two, and that's the reason he's here at number two, just because like his ability to both. I know early on I saw kind of Kamara um, comps to him. I don't. I I get like the Kamara kind of role I could see as him, like that ability to be a really good receiving back is role but like I think he's I think he's more explosive than Alvin Kamara was maybe not as good at like just Alvin Kamara has that elite ability to just kind of maneuver his hips and his body to like slide off tackles Jameer Gibbs is more of like a dudes don't touch him he's not as good at like breaking arm tackles as Kamara is but he's just better at just making dudes not be able to touch him and why he could be an elite running back with like I said elite receiving upside which is why he's here at two over a dude like Charbonnet just those elite receiving running backs aren't you don't you don't see a lot of guys who can receive that well and run that well and he's one of those few dudes that does both and why he's ultimately could sneak into day one I think ultimately he's an early day two kind of guy but like I wouldn't be surprised if he sneaks into day one a team like the Eagles could be looking at him at the end of the draft you know team like Eagles Bills uh, Bengals you know I wouldn't be surprised if one of these teams are looking at him at the end of the first round and might might pull the trigger just because he has that elite explosiveness that could really change a game. My number one running back and probably the unanimous number one running back in this draft class is B. John Robinson. Listen, if someone has someone other than B. John as their number one running back, they're just trying to be different. There's, there should be no argument. This should be like Trevor Lawrence being the number one quarterback a couple years ago. Really is an argument. Put up 1,580 yards, 18 touchdowns, incredible production at Texas. Best receiver in this entire draft class. Just elite ability to run the ball, make dudes miss. He has good speed. I mean, he's got everything you want in a running back. I personally think he's a better running back prospect than Saquon Barkley. He's just that elite receiving ability with ability to just read the run game with elite explosiveness. I mean, he does everything you want from a running back. And ultimately, the only argument with B. John Robinson is where you value running backs. Because as a running back and as a prospect, this dude overall is probably a top five player in this entire draft class. Just if you just don't care about position, he's up there like Jalen Carter. Will Anderson, him, Bryce Young, those are like your top dudes. It's just like you, your blue chipper dudes where Bijan Robinson is going to be a thousand yard rusher in the NFL. He could be a thousand, thousand dude even. I could see like a thousand rushing yards, a thousand receiving yards. I mean, this dude was lining up at slot receiver for Texas, running like deep post routes across the middle and catching in traffic. I mean, he could be, he could be an elite slot receiver in the NFL, I think. And he's also a running back. Like this dude just does everything so well. And like I said, it's where you value him. I think I could see him going like 10 to the Eagles. I could see him going, you know, in the teens to some of the teams. I haven't gone to Washington in one of my mock drafts. You know, New England's definitely interested. Ultimately, I don't think he falls outside the top 20. I know there's been a huge argument about where people value running backs, but I think I've also heard a lot of reports like NFL scouts and NFL teams know that this dude's different. He's not like your Najee Harris where like he's a good running back and it's depending on what you value him at. Like this dude's a different guy. And I think NFL teams realize He's different, and ultimately, you got to think, one thing people don't talk about is, like, running backs sell jerseys, and as much as fans want their team to win, I mean, these teams and organizations are trying to make money, jersey sales are a big part of that, and B. John Robinson is going to bring jersey sales, and he's going to be, like, he's going to be one of the top jersey sales once he gets drafted, I personally think, like, 
this is going to be a fan favorite. And I think NFL teams take that into account too. Like, hey, this is going to bring in a lot of money to the organization just with the eyes he's going to bring and how many people are going to buy his jersey and love him. So that's another thing you got to think of when he might go higher than people think. And ultimately, ooh, I don't want, I, I, you know, I love my analytics, but I, I'm not against Bijan as a top 10 dude. I'm personally, and as an Eagles fan, I will officially, I have officially as of like a week or two ago, put my name in the Bijan Robinson at 10 hat. I think he's just a different dude that kind of transcends that running back value and a dude that I'm not I'm not scared to take him top 10 anymore just because he's he's so different at the running back position and why he's the number one running back in this class and probably the number one running back in the last whatever how I don't know how many years we want to go back but like like I said I think he's personally a better prospect than Saquon Barkley and that's saying a lot because Saquon was an insane prospect. Now we go ahead and look at our top 10 in kind of the tiers I have. So like I said, B. John Robinson, dude's in a tier of his own. I mean, like I said, elite running back. I got my next tier of Jameer Gibbs and Zach Charbonnet, who I think my like early mid second round kind of dudes who I think could have a really huge three down role as a premier running back. Then we got my next tier of dudes who very good running backs. I don't know if they're necessarily three downs, but like they could ultimately do that and probably have thousand yard seasons along with some elite athleticism and just running the ball in A-Chain, Abanacanda, Roshan Johnson, and Sean Tucker. And then we have our next tier of Tajay Spears, Tank Bigsby, and Kendra Miller of dudes who I don't know what their roles are going to be, and they're kind of your th- maybe like day three kind of dudes, but just some other good upside. Running back, I think Dwayne McBride is another dude that you would want to throw in there who's probably my honorable mention coming in at 11. But that's kind of how I would tier out my running backs for this top 10 in the 2023 draft. Anyways, that's going to do it for our running back rankings. Let me know what you guys thought of the rankings, like always, in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about B. John Robinson, whether you think he's going to be top 10 or whether you just, just don't value running back enough. Like, I could I could see the argument that he doesn't necessarily change an offense enough and that you can do just as well as you can with some other running backs if you have a good whole line. Let me know your guys' thoughts on that. Anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed all the content lately. I'm going to keep it up, hopefully, going into the draft. I got receiver rankings coming out later this week so go ahead and check that out and anyways make sure you subscribe leave a like go check out my other content um and i'll see you guys for the next video thank you guys so much for watching